Hello, everybody, and welcome to Aqua Tile for Christ. Thank you for joining me on this Thursday. It's February 9th, I think. Yes, February 9th, 2023, 3.57 p.m. Eastern Time as I speak and record, guys. Thank you once again, yet again. I will not stop thanking you and giving God praise for those of you to do join me, folks. Whenever you do, however long you do, whatever you get. Guys, I, man, we're just not, I'm not going to stop. We're just going to keep doing this. We're going to keep it rolling. Satan don't want us doing this. You've seen a couple of past videos where my camera's acted up, this and that. That you know, if I if I allow Satan to win, it's gonna get in my head. I'm gonna get frustrated and just turn the camera off and make it up and we'll do it again next day. Nah, we're not gonna let that happen. We're gonna keep getting his word in us, getting the word of God in us, lifting him up, giving him praise, honor, and glory, and just lifting up the name of Jesus. Amen. But guys, thank you for today's title. Just living with a question mark. Are you just living? Just living. Just being, just existing. Um, and our studies, the uh, Ecclesiastes, the, the all in vain chapter, uh, Ecclesiastes chapter one, verses one through 11. Hey guys, if you're hungry, keep on eating. Um, but, you know, and guys, please, you know, when we do these studies, try to find a quiet place to do them also. You know, don't don't be reading the word of God with the TV on in the background or your, your cell phone on. You may turn your phone off, turn the TV off. Turn the radio off and just just read his word. Just read his word. Let that soak into you. Everything he's given and done for us, I think that is the very least we can attempt to do. Um, so that is our studies and our lead off verses. Philippians chapter three, verse eight. The background here. I love this background, guys. Man, I love the lightning. Just the man. I don't know. I just love it. It's beautiful. Um, Philippians three, verse eight. And the word of God says, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them garbage that I may gain Christ. Guys, are you able to say that? Are you able to give everything away just to know Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, your best friend, your big brother? I mean, that, that's just, that's powerful, Paul. You know, just one translation says, I count it all as dung, manure, crap. All this stuff is crap, guys. And I think we talked about this not long ago about collections and things that we're trying to keep and we're worrying about keeping up with the joneses and what our bank account says and are you a blue collar or a white collar worker or oh, he makes six figures a year well you know what praise god what are, you, what are you doing with that are you glorifying god or yourself with it there's a big question are you just living question mark that's our title anyway let's get on it uh vernon grounds is the author today writes this there's a gulf of difference far wider than the grand canyon between living for something and merely living. But what is a worthy purpose for our existence? It better be living for Christ. Um, Ty Cobb, one of baseball's all-time greats, made a revealing admission. For years, I ate baseball, I slept baseball, I talked baseball, I thought baseball, I lived baseball. Okay, yeah, he didn't. He, he was awesome at it. He was a great, great ball player. But then he added... When you get beyond those years of playing professional baseball, you can't live on baseball. Guys, just take the word baseball and replace it with whatever it is in your life that's consuming more of you than what the word of God is consuming. This, man, guys, this should speak to all of us. Uh, certainly, there is a vast multitude of purposes to which we can devote our energies. But in the end, none of them will prove sufficient. Think about it, guys. Whew. One purpose alone gives enduring motivation to, to, to life. The Apostle Paul stated that lasting purpose this way. For to me, for to me, to live is Christ. And I believe it goes on to say to die is gain. Oh, my. Praise God, Paul. Knowing Christ, trusting him, abiding in fellowship with him and serving him. This is the one driving purpose that saves life from being little more than a monotonous, a monoton, that word, monotonous, guys, I can't say it, monotonous march of meaningless days. Ooh, it's a tongue twister. Um, even when we are old and infirm, listen to this, folks, even when, even Ty Cobb, even when we are old and infirm and can't do those things we used to excel in life at, because it does not last forever, guys, Ecclesiastes tells us this. We can serve him through a ministry of example and intercession. So, guys, 
If Satan's getting in your ears telling you you're too old to make a difference in this world, man, rebuke him. Send him right back to hell in the name of Jesus by the authority that's in you. You got the Holy Spirit living in you guys. It's time we use this power we got. The day's coming where we're going to look back down on our past and be like, man, I did not realize I had that much power in me. Why didn't I use it more? Even when I was a teenager, uh, an adolescent, my, my mid-30s, 40s, and on up until my later years, th that power was in me the whole time, and I failed to use it. I was more concerned about the things of the world. Guys, man, we don't want to be saying that when that day comes. Um, this makes life a joyful journey with our Savior and friend, the Lord Jesus, whose face we will see when we reach our eternal home. We, man, guys, face-to-face, one-on-one. Thank you, Vernon. And our quote for today, life's purpose is found in a person, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen, God. Right there, like our background, our, our lead off first, for his sake, I've accepted the loss of all things. Count it all as crap. All of it, guys. Man, and it's, guys, it's personally, I understand it, it's a tough one. Like people that have families, I understand that you want to try. Man, I don't know. Guys, I'm so torn on this one. People there's a fine line between uh, God giving you discernment and, you know, like this morning, the word, the, the phrase popped in my head, common sense. What does that mean? What does common sense, the common sense is not in the Bible. Nothing the Bible says about having common sense. There's discernment. Common sense is based on the world. Common sense will tell you to store away some money in case you need some home improvements. Common sense will tell you to put away for a college fund. That's worldly, guys. Man, we got to ask ourselves these things. Are we, we relying on the world's common sense or are we relying on what the word of God says? God says to trust me, trust me, seek me first in my kingdom and I'll add all this stuff to you. But you got to trust, guys. You got to trust. It's my, man, my bank account is pitiful, but praise God, I've got everything I need and then some. If I got Jesus Christ, what else do I want, guys? There is nothing else this world can offer me that I would receive above and beyond uh, my relationship with Jesus Christ, nothing. You can give me, you've heard me talk about this new Tahoe. And now I think it's going to be bigger guys. I think it's going to be something bigger. That's just how God, amazing God is. God wants us to have the best. If you keep seeking him, Hebrews 11, six, believe he exists and that he, he rewards those who diligently seek him. Guys, we got to believe this. It's just not about, Oh man, you got lucky or, well, that's, that's karma. But I mean, that's all crap. That's all, that, man, that's a lie. That's the word of God. The word of God says this stuff, guys. And if you truly believe God is real and who he says, then we need to believe what he says. So, guys, this is, man, are we just living, you know, just, oh, day by day, one day at a time? Now, yes, we do. We take one day at a time because that's all God guarantees us. Yesterday's over and tomorrow's not guaranteed. So, yes, we take one day at a time. I understand that. But what are we doing each day, guys? You know, you know, we still, I used to always say, you know, come on. I still love the fact that tomorrow's Friday. I, I just love the weekends. I, I love my job. I'm blessed to have my job and be around the people I am and be the example of Christ wherever he sends me, especially in a public school. But just, I mean, just day by day, guys, it's, it's all about, it's not about material things on this world. It's not about comparing yourselves to somebody else. Man, that is, don't do that. Don't even think that way. Like, oh man, I, I, I busted my ass. Yeah, I'm going to say it. I busted my ass all my life. And what do I have to show for it? Well, do you have Jesus? Do you have Jesus in you as your Lord and Savior? Then guess what? That's what you've got to show for it. Because everything else, guys, you're not taking it with you. You're not taking it with you. We're going to leave these earthly bodies. They stay behind. So if this body stays behind any material things that you may have, you know, blood, sweat, and all that, all in vain, all in vain, just like our studies, guys. So, guys, thank you for joining me. Get alone, please. Pray, meditate, have God reveal to you what it is that maybe you just need to give up. Quit quit worrying about this so much and just focus on me more. As long as you've got Christ, you've got everything. So, guys, until tomorrow on Friday, yes, hallelujah, it's Friday. Enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll see what the Lord says then. I love you guys.